Today, we're gonna to do a really fun project where we're gonna create an asymmetrical cardboard sculpture. And I'm really excited about this one. The reason why we are creating this asymmetrical cardboard sculpture is because we're learning about balance. Remember, balance is the first principle of design. And balance in art means when there is even or equal distribution of either visual elements or weight within a picture plane or sculpture. Now, there are two ways that artists can balance something using symmetry or asymmetry. Last week we talked about symmetry and symmetry means when one half of something is the exact same as the other half of something, only flipped to be a mirror image. <laughs> However, we are not going to use symmetry to create our sculptures today. We're gonna to cre create uh, our sculptures with asymmetry. And asymmetry means when something is not symmetrical, when <laughs> Both sides are not the same as the other ones. In fact, asymmetry can mean that it's somewhat uneven. However, just because something is asymmetrical does not mean that it can't balance. So our challenge today is to create an asymmetrical sculpture but still allow it to balance. And the way that we can do that is even though each component is not the same as the other side, we're gonna use equal distribution of weight to make sure that it doesn't tipple over, okay? In order to do this project, what you're going to need is a sturdy piece of cardboard, about five by five inches, can be a little bit bigger, can be a little bit smaller, it doesn't matter as long as it's nice, thick or sturdy cardboard, that's gonna be the base of our sculpture. So it's important that it's that heavier cardboard because that'll help uh, weigh your sculpture down to the ground without it falling over. You're also going to need some thin cardboard. The cardboard that comes usually from either cereal boxes or snack boxes. Now, if you just have the boxes, in order to get the individual pieces of thin cardboard, what you can do is get out your scissors, which is your next supply that you need, and cut along the edges of your boxes to flatten out your uh, thin cardboard and to create smaller pieces. So if you have a box, find any corner to cut along and then open it up and cut along all of the folds to create many pieces of thin cardboard. And last but not least, the next supply that you're gonna need is tape. And tape is very important because tape is the adhesive that we're gonna use to have our pieces actually stick together. So make sure that you have some nice, sturdy tape, okay? In order to get started, again, your sculpture does not have to look like mine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over some cardboard manipulation techniques to help you make your flat, thin cardboard pieces turn into something that you can build on top of, okay? So the first technique I'm gonna show you is how to create these sort of bridge-like forms to make our uh, thin cardboard um, sturdy, but yet take on some shape and form. So what I might do is, I might find one of my larger pieces if I wanna create a larger base of my sculpture. Let's see what I have. This one looks pretty good. And what I might do is, again, it doesn't matter which end you use, but in order to make that bridge, all I'm really going to do is I'm gonna bend my thin cardboard piece so that it becomes round on top, like that. And then in order to create something for um, it to be taped to our base, I'm just going to, at the ends, bend 
a tab inward on both sides. So my thin cardboard already had them, but if your thin, card bar, thin cardboard doesn't have it, take the thin cardboard, fold it inward, crease on one side, and fold it inward and crease on the other side. That way, when we bend it, it creates these tabs that we can use to tape down our thin cardboard piece to our cardboard. And this is where our tape really comes in handy. So as long as the tab is, I wanna create a tape piece that's even longer. It's because I want one end of the tape piece to be longer than the tab. And I'm gonna just take my piece of tape and I'm gonna lay it along that, that uh, actually, you know what, I'm gonna go this way. I'm going to put my thin cardboard piece where I want it on my base like that with the tab sticking inward. I'm gonna take my piece of tape. I'm going to place it along my thin cardboard, having half of my piece of tape touching the thick, sturdy cardboard and the other half of the piece of tape attaching to my thin cardboard. Once it feels like it's sticking to both the heavy cardboard and the thin cardboard, I'm gonna press down and really make that piece of tape stick, 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 stick to my thick cardboard. Now, if you give it a wiggle test, you're gonna notice that it is very wiggly. So what does that mean? We need more tape, not only on this side, but also on the other side. So what you can do is you can get out your tape roll again, and this time we can make many pieces. And we're going to tape it vertically, half on the bottom of my sturdy cardboard and half on the thin cardboard. If I do it vertically, it's almost as if I'm making stitches on my cardboard, stitching it up. And then if I want it really sturdy, not only have I done it vertically, I might put one again horizontally. Really having it be super stuck on. There we go. Awesome. Give it a nice wiggle test, meaning you can pull on it a little bit. If it feels too wiggly, that means you need to add more tape. If it feels pretty sturdy, then you're okay. I'm gonna put some vertical uh, tape pieces along this side too, because I really want my bottom uh, piece to be very sturdy. So again, kind of like stitches, you can have maybe three tape pieces go vertically attaching the thin cardboard to the thick cardboard. All right, since I did it on both sides, it's very sturdy. So I'm gonna do that to my other side, but again, I'm going to bend my cardboard so that it's nice and round on top. And then on the inside, I'm again gonna put tape horizontally, taping down the thin cardboard to the thick cardboard on the inside and then on the outside. So I'm gonna go into warp speed to do both the stitches and the one that goes horizontally across on both sides. Okay, so now that both sides of my thin cardboard sort of arc are really taped down to my base, I can start building even on top of this bridge. And you don't need a large piece of a thin cardboard to do it. You can even do it with smaller pieces. So if I wanted to create even a smaller arched piece, I might find, again, a smaller piece of thin cardboard and do the same tactic. So let's practice it again. I'm gonna bend it. I'm going to fold underneath one tab on one side another tab on the other side. <laughs> and since these, once I uh, fold them under touch, I can actually just take a long piece of tape 
and tape one of the tabs to the other tab to keep it uh, to keep it bent and rounded like that. So I might take my piece of wood, make it really long. I'm going to overlap one tab on one side on top of the other tab on the other side. With one hand, I'm gonna pinch it and hold it together. With the other hand, I'm just gonna start laying down my piece of tape along the uh, where they meet, half on one side, half on the other side. And then if any piece of tape is sticking outward, I'm gonna just take my pinchers and fold it underneath and pinch it on the inside. Just like that. Since I did it on the bottom here, to be super safe, I might put some on the inside as well. So, just a small piece of tape here. Put it on the inside, half on one side, half on the other, and then on the other one, just to make it super sturdy. Awesome. Okay, now I have this little tunnel thing. <laughs> So it depends on where you want to put it. Because I'm making it asymmetrical, I might have it tilt off to the side. And because I used the same thin cardboard from the same box, they're the same length, which is really nice. If yours is sticking off of it, that's okay too. But I'm going to use my tape to stick this little tunnel piece on top of here. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to take out my piece of tape, get a long piece of tape have half of my piece of tape sticking on the inside, half of it sticking off. I'm gonna do that to the other side as well. Piece of tape on the other side. We're gonna have the tape sticking on the inside, half of it sticking offward. So that way I can place down wherever I want this littler tower or little tunnel to be. And then wherever I want to have it stick on, I'm gonna take that little piece of tape that's sticking out and then I'm gonna slightly pull it and fold it under and press it down onto my other larger thin cardboard so it sticks to it. I'm gonna do that to the other side. Pull it slightly, fold it inward and press. Give it a nice wiggle test. <laughs> if it feels too wiggly, you can even put pieces of tape across here just to be safe. The more tape you add to your structures, the more sturdy it's going to be. I'm going to put some tape here just in case. Okay. Awesome. Definitely passes the wiggle test. <laughs> So now that I have these two sort of bridges, I might try a different technique. Another technique I can create is this sort of long pillar or column. In order to do that one, what you can do is again, find another kind of longer piece of cardboard. Maybe I don't want these flaps because it's gonna make my pillar two, uh, not very sturdy. So I'm gonna cut off these flaps in order to do my column or pillar. So I'm gonna take my scissors, cut off any flaps to make it all the same unfolded piece of sturdy cardboard. Okay, what you can do is you can take your pinchers on either side, have it be long and tall. If I want a long pillar, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pinchers and I'm going to fold that piece of cardboard in half as best as I can. Then once I have it folded in half, I might take the a flap again and fold it inward on half so that it folds it in half on one side. And I might do the same to the other one as well. Fold it inward in half again.
So I have it folded in half with these two little uh, tabs like so. I'm going to slightly unfold it a little bit. You might notice it might make a square column. If you want a square column, you can uh, tape those sides together. However, the square column is not as sturdy because I can easily pinch it like that. I want a triangular column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these flaps. I'm going to overlap one on top of the other so it looks like a triangular tube, just like that. And that's even sturdier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those vertical pieces of tape across, kind of like stitches first and then one long piece along the two sides to keep it really tight together. So again, I'm gonna get out smaller pieces of tape, have those pieces overlap, create little stitches along the seam. And one long one that goes over the seam in the other direction. Here we go. Give it a little wiggle test, seems pretty sturdy. But I want my pillar to be attached to this thin cardboard. There is a sneaky trick you can do to have the bottom of your pillar really be uh, taped on without it falling off. What you can do is take your scissors and you're just going to make a little cut at the bottom of each corner. So one, two, three cuts. So watch this. I'm gonna take my scissors, I'm gonna make a little cut at, the, at where it's folded here. I'm gonna make the same length cut on this fold here. And last but not least, I'm gonna make the same length cut on this fold here. And if you pinch it, you'll notice I've created a nice tab. So what I want to do is I want to fold that tab outward on each side so that I have one, two, three tabs. These tabs make it easier to put your pillar down and have pieces of tape go across your tab, holding it down to that thin piece of cardboard. So let's get out our tape. I can put a longer piece of tape on one tab like that with the tape sticking out either side. Find a nice place for my <laughs> pillar to be. Maybe I'll, I'll put it right here. Again, it's asymmetrical, so it can go anywhere. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the either tabs, having the tape go across on this tab, hold, taping it to the um, to the cardboard underneath, and one last one over here. Okay, so I have these bridges and tunnels, I have this pillar. Maybe I want to create different leapfrog levels on my pillar, and this is a really easy tactic to do as well. What you can do is you're just gonna take your scissors and anywhere where you want a little leapfrog level, Take your scissors along the fold of the pillar. You're just going to cut a little incision, not all the way across, but just a little incision, about a half inch. Then I can take some thin cardboard, make any shape I want my leapfrog level to look like. I'm gonna make a nice organic shape for my leapfrog level. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that thin cardboard and I'm going to insert it into that little slit that I've just cut out and voila, <laughs> your leapfrog level is attached. If you wanna make it super sturdy, you can always add some tape from the leapfrog level onto the pillar to make it super sturdy. You can do that on the top, on the bottom, but it should be pretty sturdy regardless, okay? Maybe I wanna add a couple more leapfrog levels, one on this side and maybe one up here. So again, I can take my scissors wherever I want my next one to be, 
Make a slight little incision, about a half inch, along the fold. Find my thin cardboard. Cut out any shape I want my leapfrog level to be. It doesn't have to be the same shape, does not have to be in the same size. You can make them different sizes. And once I've cut out my shape, find the slit, insert, <laughs> and you can even add some tape to make sure that it really stays on there. Okay. Awesome. So I have one, two, maybe we'll, I'll add one last one up here. Again, take your scissors, make a slit, thin cardboard, cut out your shape. And insert. Just like that. Okay, so I have my different levels of my leapfrog shapes on my pillar. I have these bridges. If you want to create a design of different shapes on the top, you can use the same technique where you can just make a little slit on one side of your pillar at the top and then a slit on the other side of the pillar and whatever shape you want to put on the top. Again, you can cut it out and insert into the slits at the top as well. <laughs> cool, all right. But in order to get the, to those leapfrog levels, maybe I want to create these longer walkways or tramways to each level. In order to do that, I can get out my long pieces of thin cardboard, just like that. I have one really long one, which is great. I'm gonna cut it in half. And again, your cardboard might not look like mine. I'm just showing you, if you have a long one, what you can do, similar to our bridges, we're gonna create a, a tab at one end and a tab at the other end, like that, and then tape it down. But this time, instead of bending it all the way around, I'm gonna bend it until it hits a level of my sculpture. Okay, so I'm going to, once I, once I have it slightly bent and I have it positioned where I want it, I'm gonna add that tape. taping down the tab to the sturdy cardboard, and then taping the tab to wherever I want it to land. So again, bending it, sticking the tab down, putting tape along the tab, and then press, press, pressing so that it stays on. And maybe I'll make one last one going to the top tower. So I'll take that other one that I cut out, the other half, and I'm going to tape it down on this one I just made. Bending tab on one side, tab on the other. Taping these together. and bending it and having it land to whatever level I want it to land on. Taking your tape, having the tape go across that tab onto whatever you want it to be taped to. Nice. Okay, I have different levels and it's really up to you what else you want to add. You can add decorative uh, shapes to your uh, sculpture, but if I, even though it's asymmetrical, meaning it's not the same on one side as it is on the other, if I lay my sculpture down, it doesn't tip over. It still is very sturdy. So again, friends, 
I'm gonna go into warp speed to just add some decorative details. You can add whatever you want. Yours can look very different from mine. But remember, try to make it asymmetrical, but yet still balanced and not have it tipped over. All right, I'll go into warp speed to show you the extra details. All right, so I added different sort of shapes and decorative elements to my uh, sculpture. I even made a bridge from one uh, element to another, and it's definitely not symmetrical, but yet it still balances when I, when I lay it on the table. Again, friends, yours doesn't have to look like mine, but you can use the different techniques that we had gone over to create a sturdy structure of your own. I hope you had fun doing this lesson and I can't wait to see yours.